But we're sitting here at our headquarters building for the ambulance company for Lane Life Trans, and we just uh, got through our yearly inspection process from the state of Ohio. And uh, the preparation for that's rather extensive, to say the least. And I thought I would have uh, the two people that were leading the charge towards getting, uh, getting that inspection finished and, and sort of fill in a little bit why we do it and what it takes to, to pass an inspection in Ohio. And I just think it's something that uh, people probably don't think anything about. And believe me, when we find out we have an inspection, we think about it a lot. Yes. And, and it takes all hands on deck. And believe me, it's not just these two. It's a lot of people that do an awful lot to make sure that we get through those inspections. And, and we did just get through it. We just talked to the inspector yesterday, and we, we passed with flying colors, and we were very proud of that. But, I mean, you guys, why don't you... Tell us a little bit about you know what goes on with that whole process. The state of Ohio requires us to have license to them, and to have those licenses, we have to be inspected. And um, we like the inspections, even though it, it it's a stressor. Um, but it's the whole team of us, both management and staff, to make sure we're prepared for that. Um, it's an extra set of eyes coming in, make sure we didn't miss anything along the way. Um, we're so busy with day to day things; sometimes things can be overlooked. So they come in, they check paperwork first, they check all of our liability insurances, make sure everything's up to date. They check our drug license, make sure they're current. Then they go out and physically inspect um, each truck. Um, this year there's 20 trucks inspected. We know they're coming, but we know that if we miss something throughout the day, the year, or whatever, they're here to tell us, hey, you missed something. Um, we were glad that this year came back with zero citations or violations. Judy could tell you what goes into the preparation for that because she, she was um, the person heading it up this year. It does, it starts about, a, well, we start with the crews a couple months ahead of time and start explaining to them the state check sheet and the list that they must go through. And we have each crew, we want them to experience it as well so that it's their understanding what needs to go on and not only our daily checks, but monthly checks, making sure we don't have expired medical supplies on our trucks. Um, even though they do that on a regular basis, it's still good to do that annual check uh, once a year and really deep clean and make sure that we don't we aren't missing things on a regular basis. So they start pretty early on, about a month or two ahead. And right. as it gets closer to the time, our supervisors also were out in the trenches with them, cleaning those trucks, checking things, and making sure everything's ready for our official inspection day. And it's a real challenge for us because there are so many trucks. Right. There is. Uh, and in a company that would have three vehicles or four vehicles or five vehicles, it's not quite as bad. But when you have the number of vehicles that we have to put through that, that ringer, it's 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 tough and it's a lot of work and it's it falls on everybody's shoulders. Who and did this? Out. Oh, sorry, we, <laughs> we split it up. Yes. Um, we gave Robin the equipment in the ambulance. You know, she was in every ambulance, checked it, and, and Ryan did roadworthiness to make sure there's no blown bulbs and the turn signal lights work and license plate plates. And Jeff and Larry did the stations, and Judy and I pushed them along the way and, and you know, filled in the gaps. It's not that we don't check the trucks on a regular basis, but we are such a busy system. If you notice, the stations almost form a circle. So if this ambulance goes out on a call, this ambulance will move into the middle and it supports the whole system that way. And the whole system works that way. It's constantly rotating where there's always an ambulance in the middle. We service, I believe, what is about 125,000 people, Mr. Lane? Yes. yes. So, with 125,000 people, especially on a day like today when it's, you know, humid in, in the 90s, you get a lot of heat-related emergencies, um, different environmental things, and so we always want to keep somebody there. That's always been a big part of our growth plan was we never wanted to get to the point where we were going to be leapfrogging into other areas. We always wanted to grow in, in areas that were adjacent to another area we served so we could get that coverage mm -hmm. and it would work in our system. And again, that's part of that comfort thing is being able to provide the coverage because if you're leapfrogging over one community to another, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Response times just fall apart and it really doesn't work. We've always had regulated growth. Yes. And yeah. and you go, a lot of planning goes into it before we make that move because we don't want to let down the communities that um, we've already been serving and been there for us. So we try to regulate it 
and make sure that we continue to do the most good for the most part of people with the resources we have. And when we do grow like that, it, it actually helps the whole system because, like Tom was showing, how the right how the how the, the, the trucks move and they and they adjust. The bigger we get, as long as we're expanding out from that center, you know, when it just gives more trucks to move in that system and it gets mm -hmm. the high tech movement of the vehicles, you know, right. supports the region, supports the whole region. So. Yeah, we're rare. We're we're rare because we are a regional EMS right. mm -hmm. and not just a regional ambulance service. There's a distinct difference in that we're an emergency medical service with all of these nine one one responsibilities. And most of the time, ambulance companies are just that. They're ambulance transport companies. Right. Mm -hmm. We are tied in, you know, legally to communities as nine one one primary providers. So that makes us rather unique in this day and age. When the inspections became part of Ohio's requirement for emergency medical services. We were one of the very first, were we not? Yes, they, the inspection started in July of 92. 92, and our inspections are July of every year because we were one of the first, so. There's an old saying, I used to have it on my wall, and it said something about if, if, if you're the one who sets the bar, every once in a while you have to feel obliged to raise it. And, and yes. you know, you guys have heard me say that before, and I really think that's, you know, that tends to be how we look at these things. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, we'll do whatever it takes, and it, we'll do it, we'll do it well, and we'll just try to do it better. It's always good to have a challenge. Exactly. Well, again, congratulations to both of you and to the rest of the whole team here yes. and everybody else that, that handles the green and whites, as we call them, uh, for another year. It, know, definitely, inspections it over. definitely takes us all. It was enjoyable to hear him, for me to have a chance to interact with the inspector mm -hmm. uh, yesterday as well. That was really cool, because I'd, I'd never really had a chance to do that before. Right. I just got the results after. So once again, thanks to everybody.